Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, I'm going to do the introduction, introduction in my own language uh, as a traditional way. Değerli öğrenciler, değerli misafirlerimiz, uh, bugün gelip bizi onurlandırdığınız için, onurlandırdığınız için çok teşekkür ederiz. Öncelikle bu bize bu fırsatı verdiği için Profesör uh, James Bey'e, ardından uh, bize yardımcı olduğu için Gökhan abiye, ardından uh, emeği geçen Angelo Bey ve emeği geçen Olga Hanım'a çok çok teşekkür ediyorum. Onun haricinde bu gece bize gelip yalnız bırakmayan aile üyelerimiz, ayrıca buraya kadar gelip giyinen ve hazırlanan sınıf arkadaşlarım, ayrıca bugün için büyük emek döken takım arkadaşlarım için takım arkadaşlarıma ben teşekkür ediyorum ve size takım üyemiz ve takım liderimiz olan Yorli Hanım'a bırakıyorum. Welcome for presentation of the project Testing at Bergen Community College Breakfast, Lunch and Dinner. My name is Jolie Sembrano and I am the Vice President of Leader Team Victoria Vasquez and our team is going to be conferred for Chamin, Jocelyn, Lee, Ali, Chugai and Anthony. In continuation, the team member will be presenting the social media campaign campaign with a commercial video, Instagram page, and marketing idea. A continuation, los miembros del equipo estarán presentando la campaña de redes sociales, video comercial, la página de Instagram, y la idea de mercado. So, for our social media campaign, we, um, we started through Instagram. Um, our commercial is on there. Um, the name of our uh, of what we changed to cafeteria is name to Bulldog Hut is on there. The logo we made is on there. Um, some photos we took at the at the Bulldog Hut itself um, shows us uh, what type of food and um, drinks they have there. And uh, yeah, uh, this is our commercial video. We also have it on Instagram through our code. If you want to scan it with your phone. something is missing in our cafeteria and in our uh, dining center. That's why we are doing this presentation, right? So uh, the main thing we, we, uh, we saw in the cafeteria is the thing about the marketing, right? So even though you have the best food in the world, if people doesn't know it, how can you market, how can you uh, sell it to people, right? So the main thing, the main problem is the lack of attraction. So how do we lack of, uh, how do we solve that problem? So the thing about the school itself, uh, I think my all of my friends will agree with me. The, this school is a little boring. So <laughs> yeah, sorry, uh, but this school is a little boring. So everyone is trying to escape from the school as soon as possible when they finish their classes. To be honest, I myself don't, don't even like went to cafeteria before this presentation because I don't need to stay in the school to have some time. So to strengthen uh, our school bonds and our uh, to be able to spend some time with our friends, we should add some something to school, right? So as as we all thought that I think and we think uh, 
build a gaming center. It's, it will be a really easy and a cheap one. We could just add, add up a place to have some table games, maybe some video games, some music, something like a little corner that, that, can, you can, uh, that includes the games you can find in every uh, gaming center. Then, of course, we also want, we also saw the lack of uh, awareness of the, our dining center. And even though, like I said, we do the best marketing, if people don't know we are doing that, it doesn't matter. So we should put QR codes in uh, all around the school, uh, starting from the student center and the tables in the student center, so people can know what we are selling in the dining store the dining uh, room, what we are doing there, and how can uh, they will know how we are able to provide, what we are able to provide. Of course, we have uh, some special events which will, my colleagues will present uh, later on uh, to present uh, and promote our cafeteria. Also, we, sh we can use our school's email uh, system to let uh, our friends and our professors about our events and about our new game, gaming center. Uh, and also, we can we all, we all know that a social media campaign is important for every business, so we can uh, strengthen our social media campaign by using some influencers for uh, our dining cafeteria. Thank you. So yeah, we, we made a survey. Um, we surveyed about 50 people, and what um, people liked the most was music and video games out of the four people that you see here, TV, music, and video games. And they also um, thought that that was the best time for a schedule for people to come and eat at, at our Bulldog Hut. As you can see, we can just include the easiest, uh, easiest uh, games, games and uh, tables to our game center. I want to continue in my own language uh, for the next part. Bildiğiniz üzere ülkem, ülkemizde diyecektim evet. Bildiğiniz üzere okulumuzda birçok Türk var ve ayrıca e, okulumuzda kafeteryamızda gördüğünüz üzere ayrıca internasyonel bir yemek menümüz de var. İnternasyonel yemek menümüze bakarken neden Türk döneri olmadığını ben Şahsen yani baktığımda şaşırdım. Sizin Türk olduğunuzda fark etmeme rağmen hani bak, baktım ve dedim ki neden Türk döneri yok? Okulumuzda sizin de bahsettiğiniz üzere ayrıca Türk şeflerimiz olduğunuzdan da bahsettiniz. Ayrıca Türk öğrencilerin de çok olduğunu biz biliyoruz. Zaten sırf bu sınıfta iki tane Türk öğrencimiz var. Ee, ve Türk döneri hem de öğrenci için benim Türkiye'de en ucuz bulabildiğim yemek olduğu için Türk döneri biz tavsiye ediyorduk ve kendimiz e, Türk döneri tüketiyorduk. Şimdi ayrıca Türk dönerinin şöyle bir özelliği var. Kendisi yani turistik olarak Türkiye'de ilk Türk yemeği dediğiniz zaman bir gelen akla kebap, iki gelen de akla döner. Neden bu yemeğimizden hem ucuz olmasından, hem kolay olmasından, hem de şahsen benim bayıldığım ve eminim ki tüm e, kültürlere hitap edebilecek bir yemek olduğunu bildiğim Türk dönerini kendi kafeteryamızda, kendi e, Türk şeflerimizle sunamayalım. İnternasyonel e, Yemek menümüzün bence baş tacı olabilir diye düşünüyorum. Ayrıca yapmasının çok zor olmadığını ve herkes için de ucuz ve tüketilebilir bir yemek olacağını düşünüyorum. Thank you. Hey, hi, my name is Jocelyn. I'm going to be uh, talking about the promotion and discounts in Spanish. Okay, promociones y descuentos. Puedes comprar uh, seis empanadas y puedes recibir dos gratis. También si puedes comprar un hierro de res y recibir una bebida gratis también con tu alimento. Y vamos a suponer que días especiales, como Día de la Amistad, Día de la Luna, cosas así, puedes recibir descuentos en ciertas comidas. Aquí tenemos un um, poster we could put up around the building to let everyone know um, that we're celebrating Friendship Day and that there's going to be certain discounts. Este es el logo de la cafetería que mi equipo y yo pensamos en. Okay, el Bulldog Hub proporciona múltiples alimentos para los estudiantes en un solo lugar. Lo hace un espacio, un espacio conveniente y un ambiente amistoso para que los estudiantes puedan venir, relajarse, disfrutar y comer. Good evening, 
everyone. My name is Victoria. I'm the team leader of Team 2. Uh, now I will be presenting to you the pizzeria logo that I actually hand drew myself and Lee's daughter kindly digitalized it for us. Um, the whole idea behind Bulldog Slices is again, we're trying to stick with the idea of bringing more awareness and bringing more school spirit to our school mascot, which is obviously the Bulldog in case you didn't get the hint. Um, and yeah, I just wanted something a little bit more friendly and you know, who doesn't love dogs and who doesn't love pizza? Dogs and pizza put together it makes, it makes me happy. I don't know about you guys, but it makes me happy. <laughs> um, and the pizzeria downstairs currently offers a wide variety of different toppings for students. And it's just something quick and easy in case you're in a rush and let's say you have maybe five or 10 minutes to get to class and you have time to stop. You can grab a slice of pizza, grab a drink from the fridge and be on your way. to present the Lord's Day program. Okay, so I believe the Lord's Day program, the main purpose is attract the customer, consumers come back to the stores, restaurants again and again, and the consumer more and more to become the Lord's Day program. So I'm thinking is what does attract the students come back to the cafeteria more often? And the students need coffee. That is what I think, and a lot of coffee, free coffee. So that's where we come out, come out of the idea of what we call the students' coffee club. So when you join that, the student when the when the students apply the club, and uh, we will give them this uh, thermal cup, and have our have, have the logo about this uh, restaurants, and have a QR code. So. It will be included the membership and a lot of promotion. We will certainly set a QR code. So let's just bring a sample. And the when the students have that the summer cup, then they can use the summer cup, go to the cafeteria, get the free coffee and the whole month. And the next month, they will pay $9.99 per month for the membership and enjoy the unlimited coffee or the soft drink. So, you know, so I believe the most people, when they go to get the coffee, of course, sometimes they will check some snacks and attract their attention, maybe just grab one bar or chips. And also this will increase the, uh, the business sales in the restaurant. Okay, so when the students are in the coffee club and also automatically enrolled to the reward program. The reward program I will introduce later. So. Once you are in the, once the students are in that the coffee club, and they will enjoy a lot of the weekly promotion discounts, and uh, not only includes the meals, drinks, and snacks, also some merchandise. And uh, we are thinking about if this is the this uh, cafeteria maybe can bring some like uh, cups, t-shirts, and uh, all the something related about the Brazilian college, uh, college. And because all the students are loyalty customer to the cafeteria, so we have to give them some special treatment, so they will come out the birthday treat, or some like a graduation treat, or some special let them to feel they want to join that club. Okay. So in this school, not only have students, we have a um, professors and all the staff, uh, all the staff, the workers in the school. So they are our customers as well. So we have to let them to know the cafeteria and uh, to become some another way to bring the more business to the cafeteria. So for the for the professor, and we give them another special thing is called the professional promotion code, and we will print it on that keychain, and uh, of course they will get the free cup and get the unlimited coffee and they also use that the PVC code can get the 5% discounts. The major thing is I think 
they can ask their students. Say that if you use, if they, the students use that as a PVC code, and the students can get 5% off, and also the professor can get a reward point, uh, uh, reward points. So the reward points have a lot of benefits. I will introduce them later. So just to think about it, when the professor go to the school, or go to the classroom, hold the cup and show the logo there, and then say, the, okay, put it there. It's just like a free advertisement there. Okay. Okay. So the next uh, will be the reward program and the link uh, associated with the, the student lorry club, uh, uh, student coffee, uh, coffee club, and the professional coffee club. So because when they spend, they will accumulate the reward points. It's kind of similar when you use a credit card. So when you spend, and then you will get the points. When you buy the meal, drink, anything purchased in the cafeteria, you will get the points. The points you can use a lot of things. You can to deduct to, to redeem for your meal, to get a drink. And uh, the major one thing is you can pay for to pay for your membership. I just mentioned uh, previously, I said, okay, maybe one, uh, $9.99 the membership membership fee. So if they spend more, they get more points. The points can to exchange to use for the membership. Then that will be total free coffee for the students. Then they will come more often. Okay, and also the points for the, for the student or professor and they never expire until they close the account. Uh, uh, like uh, get out of this the pro uh, get out of the club uh, student or professional club, and uh, I want to emphasize about unlimited the reward points can be transferred. This is one thing as we can attract new customer. It's like some new students come in the school, but they don't know anything about the promotion the the restaurant, and, and then the, some. People is a loyalty customer, and they said, "Okay, I have a point. I can treat you free. I can transfer, and then they will use that the for the point to buy one meal, and then they kind of should start to like it. And also, when the students graduate from the school, they has some points. How they do it? They can give to another friends or some new students. Also, I forgot to mention one thing is uh, when the professor." let the students to scan their uh, the professor promotion code. Also, the students can choose which professor's PPC code that they can scan. It's kind of like I use that in my, prof uh, my favorite professor's code, and I use it, and the professor also can get the points. And also, you kind of help your professor get a free drink and a free meal. Okay, so that is what I, Try to present. Thank you. Hello, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Ali Sila, and I'm going to be talking about the food menus. Uh, as you see here, we have four main uh, cuisines, and these cuisines were not made by us. We had uh, we hand out uh, some survey asking students what types of cuisine they want to see in our cafeteria and in our pizzeria. And according to that survey, most of our students are fans of Latin food, Italian, Asian, and Halal food. Yeah. And even though even though uh, all of them, they, they love these kind of cuisines, we didn't just create the menu out of it. We asked ourselves three questions. First of all, if we're gonna have to bring in the food, we make sure that the cafeteria workers are gonna do our uh, make that food easily and also we want it to be cheap because students are uh, generally broke so we're gonna have to consider that one and in addition to that we want some food that's gonna be quickly eaten because we don't want a steak and have a fork you know you just have like 15 minutes i don't know what so because of that we came up with these uh, menus the first thing uh this is a dessert that we have made uh actually you can make your own dessert clips and the steps are right here. First thing first, you're gonna have to choose your, your own toppings. You can see the bananas, and uh, you have uh, Nutella's, 
Subway, Woolery, and also Lanius. We, yes. After that, we have a food grid. Now, the food grid is part of our lunch and menus, and we came up with three uh, menus for that one. The pizza grid, which is included tomato sauce, garlic, onion, basil, etc., as you can see. In addition to that, we have chicken teriyaki grid. Uh, that's chicken, uh, spinach, carrots, and sesame, as you can see. After that, we have fajita grid, which is chicken, bell pepper, onion, lime juice. Yes. We also have another dessert. Uh, so to, uh, in that one also you can choose your own base and also choose your own topping and everything. So we have those two desserts available for students in our lighting section. Uh, we also have uh, baked empanadas. So there are different uh, baked empanadas. First of all, you have chicken empanadas, which is 250 cents. You have beef, beef empanadas, three dollars, and ham and cheese empanadas, two fifty. We also have cheese empanadas, two fifty, and everyone can afford this, honestly. After that, we can move to our Asian style. Uh, the first thing that we have is freshly seasoned chicken bowl, and it's just for eight dollars. I hope our uh, students can afford that. In addition to that, we have chicken broccoli, uh, which is also eight dollars, and Chinese chicken wings, just for six dollars. Yeah, and in addition to that, we also have sushi available. Uh, California rule, the classic roll, it costs for six, seven, 75 cents. And we have chicken roll, also six, 75 cents. And crab Philadelphia roll, also six, for, for six, 75 cents. And in addition to those, we also have vegetable roll. Uh, uh, vegetable roll are also 6.75 cents and the caterpillars, which are uh, this classic uh, caterpillar roll for 7.75 cents, and vegetable tempura, which are uh, also for 7.75 7 cents. So we try to keep uh, the price really reasonable so that every student can enjoy uh, these uh, delicious foods. Now, this is my favorite one, <coughs> the halal food. And for the halal food, we came up with uh, beef gyro platter, which uh, beef gyro platter, falafel platter, and chicken gyro platter. And all of those plates are served with rice, one rice and red sauce. And the prices are only $10, which is really <coughs> crazy. Yeah. Then after that, we have a beef gyro sandwich, uh, which are served with pita, lettuce, tomato, and choice of topping only for $8. And in addition to beef <coughs> gyro, we also have chicken gyro because we're not gonna give you only beef as an option. Uh, that's also for eight dollar and baklava dessert, which are layer pastry dessert made of pillow pastry, and it's two for five dollars. So uh, I would like to give the space to my uh, colleague. He's gonna present you about the Italian menus. Okay, so. Me and Ali, we both came up with the Italian dishes. Um, so we came up with uh, easy, easy, cheap dishes to make that you can make in batch. Um, so it's easier for the chefs and uh, it's easier to get out quick to the customers. Um, penny vodka um, for $15. You, you could say it's even a little bit cheaper in some places. Um, just tomato sauce and vodka infused. Um, you have the chicken parmesan. You can't go wrong with a chicken parmesan sandwich. Um, for twelve dollars, um, we have the chicken frittata, um, boneless uh, tender white chicken breast, sautéed in white uh, in wine, basil, fresh mushrooms, and uh, capers. Fourteen dollars. And then we have a uh, last Italian meal, uh, meat lasagna, uh, classic Italian American lasagna with ground beef, rags, cottage cheese, and mozzarella. For fourteen dollars. So the pizzeria downstairs already has a pretty decent menu, and I mean, they specialize in pizza. You can't really do too, too much of pizza, but I figured we could add some Sicilian style pizza just because it's made on the thicker crust. Um, it's also made with a thicker dough, and it's cut into a square, which is 
typically bigger than a triangle. Um, it would just be a little bit more filling. It would be $5 per slice. And again, it's just something simple and easy for students that are on the go and need something quick and don't have time to maybe stop for an actual entree as mentioned in the previous menus. Um, downstairs, they also already have chicken tenders and fries. Um, but you know, you can't go wrong with chicken tenders and fries. It's a fan favorite. And again, the pizzeria, we're primarily focusing on something quick and easy for students, especially those who can't come either upstairs or don't have the time to make the stop to buy or wait in line for um, any of the entrees that we offer in the cafeteria. Um, we also decided to add some grilled chicken wraps just for some people that are maybe trying to be a little bit more health conscious. Uh, grilled chicken wraps, you can never go wrong. You can choose between whole or um, whole wheat or white wraps and it would come with grilled chicken, avocado, um, spinach, sliced tomatoes, and your choice of oil and vinegar or balsamic vinaigrette. And obviously this is up to the customer, so AKA students or faculty, you know, whether or not they want to incorporate every single ingredient, you can customize it to however you'd like. Um, and this would be for $10. I'd like to introduce our wonderful, <laughs> um, our wonderful Shanmin to, uh, bring about or talk about our fun fest which is again a campaign to get students more involved in our um, cafeteria and get them to you know be more involved with just other students on campus making new friends because I personally struggle making friends so I feel like fun fest is just a good idea for students to interact with one another. participando en rifas donde 
vamos a tener cinco premios, el primero será un Airpods Pro, el segundo será 30, un cupón de 30 dólares, de 300 dólares para la librería, uh, el tercero será ser miembro, uh, el miembro del, del Dojo Tree Program por el semestre de otoño, eh, el cuarto un kit de gorra, termo y sudadera de BCC y el tercero 200 dólares en el uh, Also, we are gonna have uh, photo books with props available to BCC. Um, to be able to get into the uh, photo book, you have to show to a uh, cafeteria or pizzeria receipt to up to $10. Uh, to the staff. They will save the order numbers so people cannot use the same um, receipt more than once. Um, también vamos a tener videojuegos eh, donde vamos a poner televisores, uh, juegos um, uh, y para jugar solamente tienes que presentar el, un recibo de una compra de más de 10 dólares también al personal y solo puedes utilizar este recibo cinco veces. Uh, también vamos a estar uh, dando eh, especiales y ofertas durante el día para que todos puedan seguir disfrutando. Eh, estas ofertas incluyen combos, descuentos y más. Um, here's the budget for the battle dance. Uh, for Sans and DJ, you can spend uh, $1,500. For lights, $800. Stage decor, uh, $1,000. And and for the prices, uh, $12,500. $12, uh, for the video games, we're gonna, we're gonna spend uh, $4,085. And for the photo booths, uh, $1,800. Also, we made a flyer uh, uh, for to promote the event uh, to print a hundred thousand uh, thousand uh, flyers we're gonna spend seventeen dollars and we also create uh, a shirt for the staff who is gonna be working with us uh, on the event. Uh, we're gonna have 30 uh, people working on it and the price the budget for it is three three hundred and eighty going to present to you the general budget and the sources. The general budget, um, a continuación se le presentará el presupuesto de general, general con las fuentes de información reales. El budget for social media, the page on Instagram is totally free. But you are, you are going to find information about the cost for advertising on Instagram. The cost per click of a CPC is in the food industry is $0.64. The cost per 1,000 views a CPM is average of 6.68. The logo, the logo budget, and the logo copyright fee has a cost of $500. And you can see the sources where you can research if the logo is original and how much is going to be the price. We have the idea for the QR code logo pedestal with the price of 8.50 earphones. For the quantity of 15, you're going to have a total of 425. This style with a bright color is excellent for the students and teachers, like they are going to hold the attention. <coughs> we have a gaming center for the price of 570, a good material, muscle game table, and a basketball, basketball game with the price of $2,096. You will see in the battle our sources. The marketing budget uh, of the email is totally free, something that you need to use and you can use in the Bergen Community College. The best idea for the marketing uh, email is to make a promotion and discount every week. Um, 
influences contain. That idea, I really, I really like this idea. The style that we, we were thinking of uh, influence is, uh, is looking for somebody here in the Bergen Community College that have so many followers, they have a lot of followers, and is here in New, in New Jersey. The price for an uh, influence that is a micro influencer is from is is um sorry is from ten thousand with ten thousand to fifteen thousand followers has a cost for one hundred to five hundred dollars. A mid tier influencer that has a that has one hundred fifteen thousand to five hundred thousand followers could could you charge anywhere to five hundred to five thousand dollars. The cost for this budget is going to be three thousand dollars. The banner, the banner with our logo design, um, is a great idea to put to to add it or put it in the hallway, in the hallway. We can see our logo and the food in the banner. In the bottom, you can see the sources. Um, if you want to research this information, you can look for the sources. We have the program budget, the loyalty program budget. We have a price for each key chain for $24.82. For a total of 200 pieces, we have a total amount of $2,064. We have a budget for the fuel problem. We picked the first one, it's cheaper, for 500. For, five, una, for a quantity of 500 pieces, you are going to pay 4,860. Then, since um, our survey and data that we recollect from the students, we know the HALA school is the, um, has the highest rating. And that is the reason because I see a, a, a detailed budget of the BCI Los Angeles where my resources were restaurant depot farmers market in this case. The total price to produce for this place was 175. Sell price is $8 and you are going to have a profit of $6.25. That one, uh, el precio total por el plato, que es el sandwich giro, sandwich giro de ternera, es going to be 1.75, el precio de venta 8, y su ganancia va a ser de 6.25. The chicken platter, uh, my sources were farmer market, uh, Route 46 farmer market, restaurant depot, and Walmart. Total price of the product of Product of take is two dollars twenty five. Sales price ten dollars. Profit for seven point ninety five. Precio total por el plato dos punto cero cinco. Precio de venta is going to be ten dollars. Su ganancia va a ser de siete con noventa y cinco por este plato. Total budget we have a total budget of thirty nine thousand fourteen dollars. Thank you so much for your attention. Before we close out, I'm so sorry. Did you guys have any questions for us, Professor? Yeah. Do you have any questions? I just want to be. I like the idea of the fun press. I thought you did a very nice, very detailed job on that, and I liked all the ideas for the pizza. We have like. Downstairs businesses and stuff because it's a good idea because that's grab and go. The kids are, uh, have got one for class, one over catch the bus. That's a nice way of capturing that business. Thank you. Um, a couple quick things. So, when you were talking about emails to students and the, the email system that the school has, do you know who oversees that program and is it? Can they do an email blast to every student that's in the school? Do they do things like that? Is there an administrator? I don't know if there is an administrator, and um, we receive all the time multiple emails, 
every day. I think that you can come with a demonstration like um, the Bergen Community College and I think that we can give any children. To me, this is kind of the promotion every week that will be excellent to bring people, and students, and professors. Okay, great. Um, I mean, I know everyone's pushing the, the games and the consoles and the TVs and the table games. I agree with it. I like it. I think it's a great idea. Does anyone know if the school has any resources? I mean, I, I don't know what my company's spending is like at the moment. I, I'd have to look into it, but does the school have resources that I could look into? Would they be able to offer up any? I know previously there have been um, video games held downstairs in the student center by the um, pizzeria and the Starbucks. Um, I believe it was maybe a month ago, and they I had basically <laughs> like, um, were they switches or were they like an actual like console? I think it was console. They had two consoles already, and it was um, two screens set up, or like um, almost like projector screens, like this one that they yeah. pulled down, and they projected the game um, from the console for students to come and play. And it was almost like a competition uh, where you can have four players at a time on one game, and then uh, four play players at a time on another game. So you're getting eight students at a time, and it brought a lot of attention. And also downstairs, they did uh, project the World Cup when that was going on to get people to kind of stay, hang out, and if people are trying to watch the game in between classes. So they do have, uh, I believe, previously existing consoles already. Okay, all right. So we have students to assist. Yeah. Okay. For my last question, um, I didn't know there was such a large Turkish population here. What's the, does anyone know what the demographic is? Because I feel like since I've been here, I've run into so many, but I don't really see it. I don't really see numbers. Does anyone know what it's like? Is it, it seems fairly large, but. So uh, we don't have the actual uh, number of Turkish people here, but uh, we actually made our survey based on, you know, the uh, Middle East Eastern food. That's how we gather the, uh, the data and realize that <coughs> most of the people prefer the halal food. But uh, I'm pretty sure uh, we can find a reliable information on student, International Student Center about any ethnicity and every nationality and how many students they have in here. Yeah. Yo, I, I love the halal idea. I ran the halal food program at Stony Brook University, and I want to bring something like that here. I'm just, I'm still trying to get my feet wet and I'm trying to figure things out. Plus, we all know like a very popular food chain of halal is like juicy platters. Is that anyone here? Everybody loves juicy platters, whether you are of Middle Eastern descent or not. So, like halal is a very popular food choice for people, and that's why uh, a lot of people, based on our survey, when we asked them, our initial question was, which food type would you prefer? Um, uh, Ninety percent of the people selected um, halal food over any other. Food. Yeah, I mean, I love it. That concept was the smallest concept at Stony Brook, and when I left, it was the most popular concept. Yeah. So I definitely want to bring it here. I'm just trying to see how we're going to do this. Even though the students were not from Turkey, they chose this concept because they had to really like it. Sure. I also want to add up uh, uh, our demographics data is a little off the date, but uh, when I was registering, I registered this semester, uh, and when I was registering, I don't know if you know, but there is a, a Miss Mine in International Center. She told me that uh, there has been uh, some Turkish uh, people were uh, increasing in our school, and she told me that there is around like a thousand, thousand Turkish students in our school. Wow, okay, great, great job. <clears throat> Any more questions? Thank you guys. Thank you. Thank you.